of all there is to look at in the Royal Ontario Museum. The pretty stone stupa, effectively an urn, tucked in a case on the third floor, is something you might be forgiven for just walking past. Well over a thousand years old from the border region of Pakistan, bought roughly a decade ago with private funds for $125,000. Just another object to you, perhaps. You just be very careful. But not to the U.S. special agent who likes to think of himself as Indiana Jones. Anytime anyone calls me Indiana Jones, I take it as a great compliment, so thank you very much. <laughs> so now we're going to move to another part of India. Brenton Easter knows museums like few others and knows the stock of places like the Royal Ontario Museum. The stupa, for instance, the, it's a very pretty piece. It's actually on display. Um, Easter's hesitation to say more is because he's on a case. I'm, I'm not really sure. There are aspects of the investigation, obviously, that we're not really ready to move forward with. He works with a unit of Homeland Security called ICE, and ICE has a huge file known as Operation Hidden Idols. It's all about stolen treasure. Back in 2012, ICE raided the storage unit of a famous Manhattan gallery called Art of the Past, seizing nearly $100 million worth of ancient artifacts believed snatched from places of worship by organized gangs. Subhash Kapoor was the focus of the investigation. In jail in India awaiting trial, he owned that New York gallery that sold to respected museums around the world for decades. And this is a third century limestone carving. One by one, the ICE team is trying to find those artifacts Kapoor allegedly trafficked and return them to the villages where they may really belong. I think that publicly, a lot of museums that have pieces from Kapoor are, are those institutions are looking at their collections. They're trying to identify if what they have is licit or illicit and they're contacting us and we're contacting them and we're working together pretty well. Are they all being helpful? Most of them. Museums like the one in Honolulu looked at their inventory and started handing over ancient and loved figures of deities suspected of being butchered off temple walls. We all share so much of our culture and our religion and our heritage that when you have these things taken out of context and you lose them forever, we don't know who this figure was at this mm. point in time. So it's, it's pretty devastating. It's a huge investigation and a global one, which brings us back to the Royal Ontario Museum. There are eight separate objects in there acquired from the very same Subhash Kapoor. Most of them aren't a worry at all, but that little stone stupa is a real curiosity. Deepali Dewan, the curator who acquired it and the others from Kapoor, was more than a little rattled a few years ago when she heard of the raid. I felt really dismayed and I felt um, a little betrayed, I felt a little angry um, and then I looked uh, into our database and tried to figure out what we had bought from him. Was that a nervous time for you, sort of looking into the history? Not so much nervous because the ROM tends to have a very conservative acquisition policy so we are required to do the due diligence for provenance. Um, it was more a sense of betrayal because, you know, he was a really friendly guy. <laughs> Very friendly and very convincing. The curator insists the museum did its homework and was absolutely satisfied that this piece was not stolen. Kapoor had given the Rama document called a provenance that's meant to prove its clean history. It outlined that the piece was in a private donor's collection for years, since 1969. I called the donor and confirmed with them, who is a known collector, uh, that that was the case. And and at that point, it satisfied the ROM's acquisitions practice. Um, does with, it satisfy you? Um, it does uh, for now. So who was that private donor? The ROM wouldn't answer that question, would only provide redacted documents, the name blocked out. Here you have the invoice. That bothers American investigative journalist Jason Felch, who's written extensively about the search for stolen treasures. He maintains the names on documents provided by Subhash Kapoor could say a lot about whether objects are tainted. Some names immediately trigger suspicion. So Selena Mohammed was Kapoor's longtime girlfriend. She lived in New York. Um, for many, many objects that we've reviewed, he said that this object had been in the esteemed collection of the Mohammed family in New York. 
Well, that was really just uh, his girlfriend. And his girlfriend, who has been convicted in U.S. courts, has acknowledged being a participant in uh, the creation of these fake ownership histories. He says he's been asking the ROM, a taxpayer-supported museum, for the full documentation for years. In his opinion, the museum has an obligation to be more transparent. In my view, museums uh, work in the public interest. Here in the United States, um, museums are tax exempt. So I think that gives the public a right to know where these objects being collected in our name are coming from. Why not release the name of the collector who you spoke with on the phone and just get everything out there? So I believe that there's an issue of privacy, but I'm not in a position to make those decisions. This is a conversation we had with Dipali Dewan back in the early summer. Since then, CBC managed to obtain an unredacted copy of that provenance with the name of this supposed collector plain to see, a Florida man named Leo Figuel. He died nearly three years ago. He was indeed a well-known collector, but there's a problem. An Indiana museum recently handed over a relic it bought from Subhash Kapoor to American investigators. Kapoor, investigators suggest, had given the museum fake history papers for the relic. The name on those papers? Leo Figuel. The document said he'd had the piece since 1969, exactly what was written to the wrong. Investigators seemed to believe Kapoor had used Figuel to dupe the Indiana Museum. Had he done the same to the wrong? A few days ago, we asked the museum if this news changed anything. Did it want to rethink its confidence in the history of the stupa? Maybe allow American investigators to take it, just in case it too is a stolen treasure that really belongs to a community thousands of kilometers away. We simply got back a statement saying in part that since September, the museum has been talking with the Homeland Security Investigations Unit and they are working collaboratively to establish the legitimacy of items in the museum's collection obtained through Subhash Kapoor. So items, plural, might be in question. This phenomenon is hard for museums and collectors who may be unwittingly holding artifacts ultimately bought from gangs. The site was discovered by archaeologists. As Brenton Easter told us months ago, this investigation is massive and nowhere near done. When you have an instance where some of these items are religious um, in nature, or that people are worshiping them daily, or they feel that if something is stolen, it's had a horrific impact on their life. That's very moving as well. And to see individuals profiting on other people's laws, and to think that these crimes might also be linked to other crimes, there's a lot to motivate you in these types of investigations. Easter figures he may spend the rest of his career recovering pieces from this one case, trying to trace antiquities allegedly plundered. This takes patience, and in Toronto, at least one small, pretty piece awaits its fate. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto.